Hello, I'm Sheriff Bill Brown. Welcome to the Sheriff's Roundup for the second quarter of 2022, coming to you from Sheriff's Headquarters in Santa Barbara. In this edition of the Roundup, we'll recap this year's Deltopia operation, share news from the Cannabis Compliance Team, recap the launch of Project Opioid, and end by congratulating Sheriff's Office staff and local community members who were honored for heroism or meritorious service. We begin this episode of the Roundup with a recap of the annual unsanctioned spring break party in Isla Vista known as Deltopia. The crowds on Friday were moderate, but on Saturday they were significantly larger than they were for the past two years during the COVID pandemic. The Sheriff's Office worked with the County Fire Department and the Sheriff's Fire Air Support Unit to assess the safety of party locations on the ocean side of Del Playa and were prepared to assist in vacating patios that they deemed to be a hazard. During this same time, there was an increase in emergency medical calls, the majority for acute alcohol intoxication, that resulted in the shift of medical response to a triage system in the Isla Vista area. Deputies assisted fire and medics responding to calls and clearing the roadways for their ingress and egress. Medical calls began to dwindle just before the outdoor festival ordinance that went into effect at 6 p.m. A majority of residents were compliant with the ordinance and turned their music off before 6 p.m. During this time period, the Sheriff's Office had a total of 34 citations issued and four arrests made. A majority of the violations were for minor in possession of alcohol and possession of an open container of alcohol. We want to thank our many community partners and first responders from Santa Barbara County Fire, American Medical Response, Alcohol Beverage Control, the University of California Police, and the California Highway Patrol, who have all been part of the continued efforts to keep celebrations in Isla Vista safe and local. Next, I would like to share some of the great investigative work that has been done by the Sheriff's Office Cannabis Compliance Team including two significant cases from the second quarter of 2022. The Santa Barbara County Compliance Team was founded in June of 2018 and consists of personnel from many disciplines from a variety of county departments. The team primarily focuses on unlicensed and illegal cannabis operations within the county and the safety of the public, but also handles licensing, inspections, and compliance as well. On Thursday, May the 5th, 2022, detectives from the Cannabis Compliance Team conducted a proactive investigation into a person selling marijuana illegally in Orchid and the surrounding area. Detectives served a search warrant at the suspect's home in the 200 block of North Smith Street in Santa Maria, where they arrested 28-year-old Angel Reynoso Juarez. During a search of Reynoso Juarez's residence, detectives located over two pounds of processed marijuana over $80,000 in cash, and numerous firearms, two of which were illegally possessed assault weapons. One of the assault weapons did not have a serial number, which is known as a ghost gun. Reynoso Juarez was booked at the Northern Branch Jail for possession of marijuana for sale, a misdemeanor, transportation of marijuana for sales, a misdemeanor, conspiracy, a felony, uh, possession of an assault weapon, a felony, and manufacturing a short-barreled rifle, also a felony. In a second investigation on Thursday, June 16, 2022, detectives conducted an investigation into someone selling marijuana illegally in Orchid and the surrounding area. Detectives served a search warrant at the suspect's house in the city of Santa Maria, where the suspect, 20-year-old Nathan Mediano, was arrested without incident. Nathan's brother, 33-year-old Salvador Mediano, was linked to the crimes and was also arrested without incident. During a search of the Mediano's residence, detectives located over two ounces of cocaine, over 2,000 M30 pills, frequently containing fentanyl, over $5,000 in cash, and a short-barreled, illegally possessed assault weapon with high-capacity magazines and ammunition. Both Nathan and Salvador Mediano were booked in the Northern Branch Jail on $100,000 bail. You can find information on the state licensing and testing processes on the state's Cal Cannabis Bureau website. For information on local permitting and licensing, please visit cannabis.countyofsb.org. 
I want to thank our detectives for their continuous and diligent work to thwart the illegal sale of marijuana in Santa Barbara County and for their collaboration with our county partners at Planning and Development, the Agricultural Commissioner's Office, Environmental Health Services, the County Fire Department, Sustainability, and the Treasurer Tax Collector's Office. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us as we officially launch Project Opioid Santa Barbara County. Next, I want to share some news on an endeavor that is very important to me and that is critical to our county. On Wednesday, May 18, 2022, I stood alongside key community leaders as we announced the launch of Project Opioid Santa Barbara County. This regional overdose prevention initiative is aimed at promoting high-level advocacy from many different disciplines in an effort to transform and save a greater number of lives in the community of Santa Barbara County. And I can guarantee you, we are just getting started. During a press conference held at the Buellton Marriott, I introduced Santa Barbara County as the first in California to initiate Project Opioid and presented a report titled, The Changing Overdose Crisis in Santa Barbara County. A copy of this report can be found on our website, www.sbsheriff.org. The future of Project Opioid Santa Barbara County includes increased availability of the overdose reversal drug naloxone at the sheriff substations and other locations. Project Opioid partners are working on an educational campaign that focuses on the dangers of fentanyl and a plan to coordinate narcotics enforcement to target dealers who sell fentanyl in our communities. Project Opioid is working to enhance and expand essential treatment programs and follow up with victims of near fatal overdoses and to ensure that they are offered services. Finally, Project Opioid partners aim to reduce the stigma of addiction and send the message that collectively we are deeply concerned for those who suffer from drug abuse in our community. A video of the press conference with further information is available on the Sheriff's Office YouTube channel. Last but not least, I would like to highlight some recent awards that were presented by community organizations. The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office was pleased to participate in the 2022 Kiwanis Club of Santa Barbara's annual Extra Step Awards. The Sheriff's Office nominated four citizens for their outstanding efforts in our communities. The citizens were honored during a ceremony on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. The first two honorees were Sonia Aguila and Shana Hargett. On October 20th, 2021, Carpinteria Patrol deputies responded to the report of a vehicle versus pedestrian traffic accident at the intersection of Linden Avenue and Malibu Drive, across from Canalino School, just as school was letting out. The first deputy to arrive on scene found a chaotic scene with a large crowd standing near a female who was lying on the ground. While the deputy was assessing the scene, he noticed that a community member, Agala, was directing traffic, sending traffic around the scene and onto Malibu Drive, while Shana Hargett was tending to the patient on the ground, who was not only injured, but was also scared and worried about her four dogs that she had been walking immediately prior to the accident. Both Sonia Aguila and Shauna Hargret went out of their way, taking extra steps, not only helping first responders, but coming to the aid of a fellow community member in their time of need. The third honoree was John Ornalis, an on-site property manager for an apartment complex located in the 100 block of Orange Avenue in Goleta. On Tuesday, November 9, 2021, Ornalis was home when he was notified of a fire in one of the apartments. Ornalis ran to the apartment and found it filled with smoke. Ornalis tried to enter the apartment, but the smoke was too thick and he could see flames inside. Ornalis called out to the resident and she called back, confirming his belief that someone was inside. As emergency responders arrived in the area, Ornalis ran to the street and directed deputies David Ashley and Rockwell Ellis to the fire. As the deputies crawled into the apartment to assist the resident, Ornalis stayed with them to assist. I'll recap the rest of that story in just a moment. The fourth honoree was Yu Lamut. On February 25th, Lamut was in the Galita Marketplace Shopping Center parking lot when he saw a large male physically fighting 
with a lone female Home Depot loss prevention officer who was attempting to recover a shopping cart filled with stolen items. Lamut immediately intervened and chased after the suspect, caught up to him, and confronted him. The suspect then removed a stolen hatchet from the cart and threatened Lamut with it. Undaunted, Lamut physically engaged the suspect, disarmed him, and held him until deputies arrived and took custody of him. Lamut's family attended the ceremony and received the award on his behalf. The Sheriff's Office would like to thank each of the honorees for going above and beyond in helping our communities and our deputies. We would also like to thank the Kiwanis Club of Santa Barbara for hosting this event and for their continued community support. In a separate award ceremony on May 18, 2022, three sheriff's deputies were honored with the prestigious H. Thomas Geary Award. The honors were handed out at a ceremony held at the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors hearing room, attended by personnel from local law enforcement agencies and local dignitaries, as well as family and friends of those being recognized. The H. Thomas Geary Award is named after a Santa Barbara Police Department officer who was killed in the line of duty in 1970. Every year, in his memory, the Santa Barbara Citizens Council on Crime recognizes excellence in law enforcement in Santa Barbara County. This year, two sheriff's deputies were honored with the H. Thomas Geary Award for Valor for their courageous, swift, and resolute actions under life-threatening circumstances. On Tuesday, November 9, 2021, at approximately 4.53 p.m., deputies were dispatched to assist fire personnel with a structure fire in the 100 block of Orange Avenue in Goleta. After deputies were dispatched, it was reported someone was possibly trapped inside the building. Deputies David Ashley and Rockwell Ellis were the first to arrive on scene. They were directed to the affected apartment by the person I just spoke of previously, John Ornalis, and they were able to see dark black smoke billowing from the apartment. The deputies made their way to the apartment and initially could not see inside due to the thick smoke. Deputy Ellis attempted to look inside, but was quickly overwhelmed by the smoke and pulled his head back outside. Deputy Ashley dropped to the ground and was able to see as there was a layer of clear air along the floor. And he was able to see a woman down on the floor about 20 feet inside the apartment. Deputy Ashley held his breath and crawled along the floor, making his way to the woman. When he arrived, he saw her clothing was on fire and she was unconscious. He patted the flames out on her clothing and began to pull her out of the apartment, crawling on his back and pulling her behind him. When he was almost out of the building, Deputy Ashley took a breath and immediately felt the effects of the smoke and the hot air from inside the apartment. He had difficulty breathing and he started to get dizzy. Deputy Ellis stepped into the apartment and pulled both Deputy Ashley and the woman to safety outside. Deputies Ashley and Ellis took a moment to catch their breath after coughing from smoke inhalation, then carried the woman to the street. Once at the street, they rendered aid to the woman until additional personnel arrived to assist. The woman was transported to Cottage Hospital and was later transported to a hospital in Los Angeles, and she is currently recovering from her injuries at a recovery hospital in the Los Angeles area. If it were not for the quick thinking and immediate actions of these two sheriff's deputies, it is doubtful that the woman would have survived the fire. Congratulations, David and Rockwell. We're proud of your courageous and life-saving actions. It's my pleasure to be here tonight to present the H. Thomas Geary Award for Superior Performance to Sheriff's Pilot Lauren Courtney. Sheriff's Pilot Lauren Courtney was honored for his extraordinary dedication to public service and his exemplary performance. Lauren is responsible for flying law enforcement, medevac, technical rescue, and firefighting missions. He is tasked with maintaining proficiency in five different aircraft, each with their own capabilities. He works with four different crew chiefs, each with their own operational styles. In addition to the current fleet and crews, Lauren has been instrumental in the build-out process of the unit's new Firehawk helicopter. Pilots at the Air Support Unit usually work a 4-10 schedule, remaining on call between shifts for half of the two-week pay period. 
In order to keep the unit fully operational, Lauren works a 5-10 schedule and remains on call during his work week as well as during his two days off. He's often called back to work for call outs on his days off. Lauren minimizes his vacation time and always puts the operational needs of the unit above his own personal needs. In 2021, pilot Lauren Courtney flew a total of 256.6 hours, totaling 71% of all flight hours in the unit. Those flight hours included 30 medevac transports, 28 hoist rescues, and the response to 38 vegetation fires, resulting in 238 water drops. Lauren launched on 104 responses to law enforcement missions, including 27 vehicle pursuits, three foot pursuits, and 35 crime-related searches, resulting in the apprehension of 35 suspects. Lauren responded to 79 of those incidents after hours. Pilot Lauren Courtney has shown exceptional loyalty and dedication to the air support unit, to the fire service, and law enforcement agencies that he flies in support of, and most of all, to the people of Santa Barbara County. When a fire threatens to burn out of control, when a lost or injured person needs rescuing, when the safety of the public is threatened by criminal suspects on the run, only then is the true benefit of the air support unit realized. Lauren Courtney distinguished himself during 2021 through his can-do attitude and his exceptional airmanship. Well done, Lauren. The Sheriff's Office thanks the Santa Barbara Citizens Council on Crime for continuing to put on the H. Thomas Geary Awards for the past 52 years and for providing an opportunity to recognize law enforcement personnel who've gone above and beyond to protect and serve their community, just as Officer H. Thomas Geary did in sacrificing his life. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of the Sheriff's Roundup. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us as we protect your safety.